uh, before we start talking about visualizations, I will go here to report menu. I will go to report and I will show you that here we have this option run with full interactivity. Now, what does it mean? If we run our report in HTML format, a new tab will be opened and this uh, window is called Cognos Viewer. And this is the newest version of Cognos Viewer with the most modern technology. But if we uh, go back and if we disable this option run with full interactivity, in that case, we wouldn't get the newest version of Cognos Viewer, we would get the old one. I will now go back and why is this important? Well, first I will turn on uh, this uh, run with full interactivity property. I will go here to page one and I will now create a new visualization. Uh, visualizations are created by using this icon from the toolbox. I will move this uh, icon to our page and we would get this new dialog. Now here we, in this menu we have a different kinds of charts and they are not different only in their appearance and um, properties but they are different in their technologies. For example, this modern uh, set of visualizations 11.1 is only available if we use that property run with full interactivity that it will use the most modern Cognos viewer. Uh, and this is how uh, these visualizations uh, look like. Then we have uh, 11.0 visualizations. Uh, these visualizations are similar, but they will also work in older version of Cognos viewer. Uh, then we have legacy visualizations. Now these visualizations are the most diverse by their, their art style and this is because these are uh, customized visualizations and we can further customize them if we know javascript and at the end we have charts now charts are the most numerous so we have almost 200 uh, different charts in this uh, set and charts are the most richest in their configuration options so they are the most customizable now if charts are so great what, why did uh, IBM created this uh, newer version of uh, visualizations? Well, to explain that, I will uh, jump here to this uh, image and I will explain a difference between charts and visualizations. When we're working with charts, we are making a request to our server and our server will do all of the calculations and it will create an image of a chart and then it will send that image to us by internet. But if we are using visualizations, we would make a request to our server and our server would send us some logic and some data. And then our computer would actually create uh, this uh, chart image. And if we click on some prompt, uh, changes in image will be generated by our computer. So visualizations are much faster than uh, charts, but charts are more powerful. Let us now create one new visualizations. I will add this uh, visualization icon and in 11.1 uh, visualizations I will select pie chart. I will click on OK and uh, first I will select this uh, pane on the right side and I will add my, my data. I will go here in segments I will add years and in uh, size I will add for example revenue. And now we have our uh, chart. Now we have to notice that when we select uh, this uh, pane, then we have all of these uh, properties here. But if we select this uh, left pane, then we have much more properties. And here in this uh, right pane, if we select a column, then we have again some new properties. So we have to make a distinction between what is selected and what uh, properties uh, do we have. Now let's uh, select this left pane. And we will see some of the properties for this uh, pie chart. First, here we can type a name for our pie uh, chart. Uh, then we can type alternate text. I will click here on three dots. I will go to specify text. I will click again on three dots. And here I can type anything. Or we can use this uh, plus sign below. So, for example, we can select this and this language. When we click on OK, then we can uh, type some term here. And here and some term here and this is how we can add this alternate text now what is this alternate text uh, used for well it is used for uh, visually impaired people they have a special software so when they move a mouse above an image 
uh, this uh, text will be written to them. They will hear this text and that text will be actually uh, some description of this image so that uh, people that are visually impaired uh, know what is uh, this image about. Uh, then below we have this property size. Here we can just uh, change the uh, width and height of our uh, image, of our chart. Uh, then we have this property donut hole radius. Here I will type some value. I will type for example 0.3. I will click on enter and I will get this uh, hole inside of my pie chart. That means that now we have a donut uh, chart. Now what is this 0.3 uh, for? Well, if we uh, have a radius of our uh, chart that is 1, then 0.7 is uh, used for a donut and 0.3 is used for this uh, hole and this is the meaning be behind uh, this value. If we select one piece of our uh, chart, for example this one, then we would have this blue border around it. If we select this uh, piece, then we would have this purple border and so on. But if we don't select anything, if I click here, in that case I would have this white border. Now we can change the color of that white border. For that we go here to this property pie border color. We click on three dots and we change this color, for example, to this uh, pink color. I will click on OK. And then we can also change the thickness of that border. We can go here, we can click on three dots and we can say the thickness should be equal to three pixels. Then we can change sort order. Sort order is about the order of these uh, pieces based on the, their values, based on these uh, numbers. So this number is the smallest one and this uh, here is the biggest one. So we can sort these pieces based on those uh, numbers. So I can choose here ascending. If we choose ascending, this is always here the starting point. And then we have the smallest number, bigger, bigger and the biggest number. Or if I choose here descending, in that case, this will be uh, the biggest value, uh, smaller, smaller, and the smallest value. But the starting point is always here, and then we go in uh, this direction. Uh, then we also have segment colors. I will click here on three dots, and here we can change the colors of our uh, chart. And uh, this is something we can uh, do by uh, selecting palette. So for example, if I select this palette, all the colors will change. If I select this palette, we will have different colors. So they change each time I select other palette. Now it is possible to select uh, and create a new palette. Uh, for that, I will click on one of the existing palettes. I will click on three dots and I will say duplicate. And then I would get this dial. Now first at the top, we have these uh, squares. Here are the colors that make our palette. We can add another square by clicking on this button plus and then we have another square and then we should select one of the colors to uh, give color to that square. I will for example select this gray. We can also delete some color. I will select this color and then I can click on uh, trash bin and this uh, square will disappear. Uh, we can also reverse the order. For example uh, these colors go from orange to gray but if I click here now they go from gray to orange. Uh, we can also uh, get help from uh, Cognos in order to define all of the colors. I will uh, select this option automatic and then I will choose one of these squares. I will select this uh, square here and when I change the color of this square, all of the uh, squares on the right side from that square will automatically change their color. For example, if I change this to this a red, we can see that this here we have uh, some new colors. If we select uh, green, we have these colors. If we select blue, we have these colors. And this is how Cognos can help us uh, to uh, define all of the colors. We don't have to decide about each color, uh, but we can get Cognos help. Uh, and we, beside uh, choosing our colors from the grid, we can also use a wheel. That means that we can uh, select colors from this uh, wheel. We can type RGB values here if we want to and we can also use a custom or automatic uh, approach to select our colors. We can also give a new name to our palette, palette and when I click on save our new palette will be saved and it will appear here in this uh, custom uh, section and here if we click on three dots we can either delete this uh, new palette or we can duplicate it and then we can create a new palette from it.